All right, folks, so in this video, I'm going to be doing some live product research. Now, the point of this video isn't, you know, I'm not going to claim that I'm going to find a $50,000 a month product in five minutes like you see these other YouTube videos. But what I am going to do is I'm going to explain my thought process out loud so that you can kind of learn what the correct thought process is, because this is really just a process of elimination. It, there's no magic bullet. There's no magic product. So yeah, I'm gonna explain everything out loud. I'm gonna put myself over on the, the right hand side and hopefully you can learn from what I say on what my thought process is rather than I'm not, you know, I'm not just gonna find this one product and then everyone's like, oh my God, I'm gonna go and sell that. So let's get into it anyway. Basically, we're gonna use Helium 10. We're gonna use Helium 10 because it's a great way of starting product research and it ticks the first and most important box. And the most important box initially is your demand. You need to be finding things that have a healthy demand and that's where everything starts so it doesn't really matter how you start product research as long as everything that you look at has a healthy demand so i like to use um, helium 10 because of that there is actually an offer right now where helium 10 have got 80 percent off for the first month so check out the link in the description if you're interested in that if you don't already have it or if you do and you, you've not upgraded you can get 80 percent off so what we're going to do is we're going to go to tools and then we're going to go to black box but what I'm going to do a little bit differently that I, I don't see a lot of people doing is we're not going to do it based on products. What we're going to do is go to keywords. Now, the reason for this is I prefer to think of product research as um, niche research because we're not really looking for just one product. What we're looking to do with Amazon FBA is we want to create a brand. And in order to come into a niche, you have to kind of, you know, you have to find an opportunity where you can think, okay, I can actually create a brand here. I can come in with an initial product and then I can scale it up and, and launch different products under that one brand. So I like to look at keywords instead of products for that kind of reason. Now, what I want to do is I want to do monthly revenue, minimum $15,000. Again, search volume, monthly revenue. This is just because I don't want to waste time looking at stuff where there's not a good enough um, amount of demand. Now you might have a small the budget and you might want to launch something that maybe only does five to six thousand dollars a month you can still probably use this because if this finds something that does fifteen thousand dollars a month then maybe you can come in and do twelve thousand dollars ten thousand whatever you get the point price i'm going to go between 40 and 70 i don't want to go lower than 40 to be honest everything that we want to sell now is over 35 dollars 40 dollars really it just helps you so much with the amazon fees and with the ppc if you start looking at stuff that's 12 13 less than 25 30 dollars it gets really difficult. It gets really difficult with the PPC. It gets really difficult um, with the Amazon fees. Review count, don't care. Do not put a cap on the review count. Don't put 300 and think if you find something that's doing um, $50,000 a month and it's only got 50 reviews, do not go into those markets. What it means is that that's an emerging market where if you try and go into that market, by the time you get your product to that market is going to be saturated so don't pay too much attention to review counts don't try and find products that have low reviews it's a recipe for disaster focus on how you can differentiate and how you can stand out in a niche that's got a good demand the bare essentials of product research that people massively over complicate is demand differentiation and economics. If you get your economics right, if you've got a healthy ROI and a healthy profit margin, that's great. If there's demand, you're gonna you're gonna make sales. And if you differentiate, you're gonna stand out and you're gonna get people to click on your listing and offer value and buy. Don't overcomplicate it. You don't really care about, you know, about reviews. Review rating is a little bit different because what I wanna see is I wanna find products where there is room to improve the product. So if we, you know, if we don't put a cap on this, if we if we find something, but it's 4.9 out of five over a thousand reviews, it means that generally that product is pretty damn good. So it's gonna be difficult to find something to improve so i generally you know again play around this sometimes you can put like 3.7 or 3.9 and like you're not going to get a ton of results but you're going to find stuff where there's a lot of room to improve so i'm gonna you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do 4.4 I want to find things that's the most 4.4 categories. A lot of people say, what's the best category to sell in? You know, honestly, I just play around, look at all the different categories. There are some pros and cons. There's some difference in PPC costs and stuff like that, but that's probably a topic for another video. But I'm going with pet supplies, sports and outdoors. I like these niches because people generally are passionate about sports. They're passionate about their pets. So generally when people are more passionate about something, they spend more money. So again, I'm going to go for baby because of that. People are kind of passionate about their babies i hope and i think so um yeah you want to go for things that people are passionate about like try and stay away if you can 
I'm not saying it's impossible, but try and steer away from things that are just super functional. A set of screwdrivers, super functional. It's not really a passion compared to something that people might buy for a hobby or for their kids or something that they're just willing to spend more money on. We want people to spend more money. We want to launch premium products where we can charge more for them so we can make a higher profit revenue. All right, so let's hit search. I've, I've put this maximum on 4.4. I've hit search there and let's go down and I'm going to go through. I'm going to, there's some stuff that I'm just going to avoid because I, like I said, I don't really like bike basket rate. I'm not saying I'm going to avoid that, but like a steamer for clothes, super functional. It's not really a passion for me. It's not something that I think people are going to spend more money on necessarily, but um, I'm, I'm not injured. So portable shower for camping. Straight away, right? Search volume, great. 20,000 is a lot. Probably quite seasonal. You've got to bear in mind, you know, is it seasonal? What we can do is we can actually have a look here. We can have a look if you click on that. What it'll do is it'll show us the search trend over time. So you can see here, right? In March, you know, like whatever, it's, it's growing over time, which is great. Like if you look from, you know, back 2019, in July 20, whatever, there was like 4,000. And now there's like, you know, it's gone up like four or five times. So it's, it's a, it's, this is in a niche that's growing, like I guess camping or whatever it is. But what we want to see is that, you know, there, there is obviously in the summer it peaks, but you know, it's still kind of healthy in December. So I'm not going to write it off, but let's have a look, right? What we're looking for is we're looking at the overall niche. We're looking and we're thinking, how can we stand out? How can we come in and stand out with something that looks a bit different that adds a bit more value to the customer and you know just we that gets people to click on it so straight away this one is obviously kind of the the top one right um it's doing 58 sales um a day which is obviously really healthy this one as well this is 40 bucks so i like the price point daily sales 13 um so this one just looks a bit more basic so i'm, I'm kind of just going through and you want to get a feel for the overall niche you want to get a feel for like you know what different types of products there are what people are really looking for obviously so this is people that are interested in camping i'd imagine if you're buying a shower then maybe you go camping quite a, quite a bit so you've got to start to think of who the demographic is what it is that they're looking for and then you got to think all right so can i start a camping brand i really like the camping niche because there's a lot of products there's so if you launch one product it means that you can do your research and probably find another 15 20 products that the same person might buy now this looks like a great listing so one thing for me i mean this is doing 1700 sales a month and i know i said don't look at reviews but this is an indication that it's, it's not that old if it's only got 200 reviews um so it was launched okay about 12 months ago it looked like it went out of stock for ages and then it came back in stock and then out of stock again so they're obviously not that great at the stock management but this is a great sign that like there's a you know oh maybe is that the summer then i get or the winter yeah maybe that is just the winter actually anyway so i'm what i'm looking at is the the listing right is it good like the listing is really good it's not often that i actually find um listings that i i really like but this i absolutely love actually because look what what they've done is they've created real photos you know they've not skimped on this like this is real and it makes it just feel super high quality so what I'd, I, would, I would actually go in and do is i, I want to see what other stuff this company sell right but this is a great listing for me like i said i love this niche because people are passionate about camping um you know they they're, they're willing to spend a bit of cash um usually to get something that's a bit more high quality the process that i would go through is overall looking at the overall niche looking at the pricing um and then you kind of want to get an idea like is there anything that you can kind of fix any any common problems so i'm going to go into this one this one's doing 40 a day looks like it's been around a little bit longer you can already kind of see the difference here that this this one is a little bit like less you know it's not as well branded it's photoshop it also looks like it's like multi-use so this is it doesn't it's, it doesn't really look like it's about camping but let's just see of the reviews if there's anything so it's 4.5 4 out of five um so it doesn't really seem like there's a ton of things that maybe you could fix 4.5 4. is really good one of the things about these types of products actually so this one this one is like a, a battery powered thing right so it's got a battery the thing with these types of products that's difficult is they're kind of difficult to actually customize so you're going to end up essentially selling the same thing as everyone else because they're ex they're really expensive to kind of customize so this one for me is is not 
is 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 not that exciting. But the one that we saw before with the bag, I don't think that one is actually. I don't think it's electronic. I think it's more. It's sort of like gravity fed or whatever. And this is an Aussie brand. This Ridgewinder. So I guess let's have a look. So remove okay so it does have a battery but let's just have a look at the reviews on this one as well 4.4 so then maybe there is some stuff in here that you can improve couldn't get it to work um all right so look at this there's only three negative reviews so already i'm looking at this right and i'm like i mean it's it, it's a big brand it's probably going to be difficult to compete with them on a quality level because their listing is really really good like really really good i'm going to go back to the black box because the things that i don't like about this one even though that i like the niche um, and maybe it is worth sort of having a look at what what else they sell, but maybe it looks like they they only sell that. That's cool though that they only have this one product, but it's obviously doing really well. And imagine they're gonna you know they're gonna launch more camping products, but yeah, it, it just doesn't really have much in a ways that you can you know you've got to be thinking everything that you look at how can i improve it how can i attract the customer in a better way you can attract the customer sometimes just by looking like you're higher quality but if you try and compete with these guys they're, they're just going to smash you because like th this listing is amazing so it's going to be difficult to stand out just from a purely visual standpoint and then there's not really that many negative reviews so there's not really that much you can address with the actual product cat shelf i might have a quick look at that but i want to just go to the bottom and see all right let's have a look at the cat shelf again i like pets i like anything to do with pets because people are passionate the, the one thing is that you see is like if i if i search for something and i see a really nice looking ad like this it's it's not a red flag for me but you've always got to be assessing like what's the level of competition at anything that you look at so if you see really great ad creatives if you see stuff like this like this is really cool i love that like just looks good. That, that would get me clicking it um you've got to think i'm going to have to compete against these guys so let's have a look at this one so this is again i said don't look at reviews but the way that we look at reviews is is to give us an understanding of how old the listing is i mean this does tell you so it, was, it says date first available 2020 the back end of 2020 but i don't i'm not sure that's always correct because if it's been around that long and it's only got 112 reviews there's probably something wrong so this is literally a shelf that you just put up and the cat you know kind of just sits on there and it's actually a really nice listing. I actually I like it because you know it's very clean. I think this is a this is a real photo. Okay, solid solid rubber wood. The copy is always really bad on these listings. Like installation instructions, pointless. All right, let's uh, let's just have a look. See if there are any sort of negative. Four point six. You know, there's not there's not a ton of stuff. Don't waste your money doing it. by All right, so, so there's there's not really any immediate things that we can sort of look at fixing. But I want to go back to the original one because I'm thinking, all right, cat shelf. I'm thinking people that own cats, what are they looking for? You know, people that own cats, they kind of, I think they like things that are a little bit different and a little bit quirky. So I would be thinking like visually, is there any way to stand out? Functionally, like you've got to always think every time you're looking at stuff, you've got to pretend you're that person. So I'm thinking I'm a cat owner and I want a, a cat shelf. Like, what do I want? I want to I want to know that it's quality. I want it to look nice probably because it's going to go in my home and I care about how stuff looks. I want it to function really well because I don't want the cats to like jump on there and then like it injures the cat or something like that. So you've got to be thinking all the time, but you know, I, I, I this is quite cool with the, the video ad. I'm, the, nothing in here is sort of striking me. There's no ideas kind of coming to mind. Like these are sort of these little cat, um, cat hammock things. These are actually really nice listings. Like what I would say is when you're looking at a niche like this, right, is if you look at a niche like this and all of the listings suck, then there might be room sometimes for you to just create an absolutely beautiful listing and come in and do quite well. But I'm going to go back. There's no, I don't really see. I'm just the whole time I'm thinking, how would I stand out? So if you can't find an obvious thing to fix in the reviews, then you've got to think, well, can I stand out visually in some way? So that's what I would be thinking is, is there a different type of wood I can use? Is there a different design? Is there something that I can come up with to really stand out to cat owners? But nothing is jumping out to me just yet. So I'm going to go back to black box. So this is all we're doing. You know, when we found um, both of our niches, we've got two Amazon brands. When we found those um, niches, you know, this is all we did. I just went through on Helium 10. We found the niche. We saw an opportunity where we thought we could um, stand out and then we went for it. So, you know, people often sort of overcomplicate. They overcomplicate product research a little bit. And in all honesty, all it is is kind of looking for ways that you can stand out and then and then bringing the product to market and making sure you've got a good ROI. All right, let's have a look at this. Ice tea maker. Um, okay. 
I'm not a lover of it. You're going to be competing against some huge brands. You know what? I take that back, actually. I take that back because um, the niches that I really like to see are the niches where everything looks the same. Because, I mean, this one is obviously not the same as this one, right? Black, like, they all look exactly the same. Now, obviously, a consideration with a product like this is you're, if you're a beginner and you've got, say, $10,000 you're not gonna be able to afford to customize this product. So you're gonna to have to buy it direct from Alibaba and put a logo on it, which means you're not really gonna be able to compete on price. You're not gonna be able to upgrade the actual product itself. But if you've got enough money to come in and do something a bit different here, but I wanna click on, so this one does 70 a day. It's got 2000 reviews. This one does 23 a day, right? To me, looks a bit cheap. It doesn't seem like that super high quality to me. But when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to think of the type of person that makes iced tea, I'm trying to think, you know, you put this in your kitchen. So I think anything that you put in your kitchen, aesthetics make a difference. So if I look at all of these and they all look almost identical, then I'm thinking, well, there's a way probably visually that we can stand out like this look. So these guys, it looks com like if I'm looking at this, I'm imagining I'm just going to I'm just going to assume I'm female. Don't sue me. Don't don't at me. But I'm kind of drawn to this one because look at the design. It's a little bit cool. It looks kind of like what, like 50s, 60s. It looks very sort of, um, just looks a bit cooler and a bit different. And I love, I love this listing so far. This looks great to me, man. What, I, I mean, missing from this, there's no text on here. Like they need to put some text on here. But for me, this, this just looks, it looks way different. And I'm not sure how well it's doing. So you can see here, this is a different kind of style, right? So again, if we go down, Look at all of these, same style, same style, same style, same style, same style. They all look the same, man. This looks different. So this is the sort of shit, like I'm not saying you can make one of these, but what you need to be thinking all the time is how can we be different? How can we bring something? Everyone else is black with silver. What can we do that's different? Because this company have obviously understood that some there's a part of this market that wants something that's a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So every single thing that you look at, you need to be thinking, is there a way that aesthetically I can improve it, I can look different? And obviously from there, you go on to understanding if you can, um, you know, if you, you can actually improve the functionality of the product. I'm always thinking here, I'm always thinking kind of like, what is the, you know, what is the actual niche? What's the niche behind this? So stroll the bag, what is the niche behind this? This is parents that are traveling and parents that travel they've got a bit of money and they really want to make their life easier for themselves so there's big pain points there so this one is this top one so this is doing two and a half thousand dollars a month this i think this is quite this jj child this is quite a big brand what i'm thinking here straight away is an aesthetic angle because this is so this is what you 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 put a stroller or a, a pram if you're from the uk you put one you know you put your pram inside it and then it protects it while you're traveling so what I'm thinking is, is there an aesthetic way to stand out here? And then what I'm going to do is investigate if there's if there's a functional way to stand out. So I'm thinking it's parents that travel, they've got a bit of cash and they want to protect um they want to protect their 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 pram, their their trolley. So let's have a look at this. And when I'm thinking of the aesthetic angle, you've got to actually understand, you know, is that something that a parent would care about? So the, the listing's pretty good. So it's basically a huge bag um that protects the thing this is a good listing not gonna lie so you get a free ebook i'm not i'm not too keen on that i don't i don't just like throwing random stuff in for free um so let's have 4.5 so what i would be thinking again all right so bag ripped stroller ruined so it ripped after using it once pain to put away you can't get it in the carrying pouch so, so that's actually a really good pain point if you think about it you know like when you buy these like sleeping bag things and they come with a tiny pouch and you can't get them back in so if that comes up a lot that could be something that you could try and address complete waste of money do you want it so do you want some would you prefer that your travel bag causes more ag agitation or while feeling uncertain so when you're reading these you really get an understanding of like what people are looking for right so if you think about what type of brand you, you could bring a brand to the market that makes parents lives easier when they travel this is what i'd be thinking i'm thinking of what what the actual problem we're trying to solve here is and it's making parents lives easier when they travel so so that you can think of how many products there is around that if that's your mission as a company that's a great mission to have because it's a very painful thing for parents so i think most of the things here it struggles to fit over the stroller the stitching stretches and cracks so not durable tore ripped damaged huge it's got 4.5 out of 5 so overall it's pretty good right 
what you've got to be careful of is when you're reading the reviews is understanding like you know is are these reviews everything gets bad reviews but are these reviews first of all something that you can actually fix but then second of all are they common enough that people you know are going to actually go for whatever you choose to to repair or improve over this so you know it looks pretty good but what i would be thinking on here is if you're browsing and you're looking at these you probably do read the negative reviews but obviously people still buy this because it's doing four thousand units a month but i would be thinking can i come in and launch something that looks a bit different visually this is just plain black. Can you can you make it a bit more attractive so it stands out a little bit? And then I would be thinking functionally, you know, would if, if a parent is looking at this and this is 27 bucks, I would want to be launching one that's like 40 bucks. But then how do you charge 40 bucks? You would have to really improve the functionality of the product. So what I would be really trying to do with this is I would be looking at what better materials can we use the stitching is going to be key so is there a way that you can reinforce all of the stitching and then what you can do in this second image you can say reinforce stitching and you can do like hours versus the competition and the competition you show it ripped you show it hanging off the you know the um the conveyor belt ripped up so you plant that seed in people's mind that yours is way stronger than the competition because that's what people are going to be worried about they're going to be like oh is it going to be strong enough I, honestly some people don't really read through the reviews they just kind of see it and then they buy it i'm going to be thinking on this main page you know how can we stand out visually so if we bring something in here you know how can we stand out against these ones I don't think they do a great job with the hero images. This one's quite good, actually. But um, again, it's just kind of plain blue. So can you do something visually that sort of stands out? I think there's, you know, the, I don't, I think the demand for these over time, let's just see how it looks. All right, so it looks a little bit, I'd have to look, let's have a look what the search volume is. Basically, what I'm thinking is like, does this, you know, in the summer when people travel, do they, do they, does this peak and then it sort of dies off over the winter? To be honest, some, sometimes that's fine as long as as long as there's still enough demand in the winter. Stroller bag, all right, it does look like it. I mean, it's pretty steady across the year. It only really drops down to like a couple of thousand. But you just have to be careful with that. I mean, this is quite a good listing. But yeah, I mean, bright color, easy recognizable. But they're not really. If you look at this, they're not really like th this is great because so, this is one of the potential pain points, right? Is like how easy is this to actually put away? Because you don't want to be like at the airport or you get to your Airbnb and you're like wanted to go out so this is great but i would have this further up so th they don't put this until here but i you know i mean it looks massive all right so they're double stitching water resistant they're not making a big enough deal about this stitching to me i i would think maybe there is a way that you can stand out visually in this niche and i think there's also a way that you could create something that's a bit more premium that has got like double reinforced stitching just make it absolutely bulletproof like call it like the bulletproof stroller bag so like just claim that you're the strongest one on the market don't just claim it actually make the strongest one on the market because these are the other ones rip but that's how that, that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking how can i stand out visually how can i improve the actual product you know the competition is pretty good like no one has an absolutely trash listing but the, the demand is good and i this is the sort of niche where i don't think it's crazy saturated I think it's good if you could bring something into here and, you know, there's loads of stuff that you could launch. There's, there's there's a clear brand there that you could come into, like a quirky, very attractive looking brand. You can source quality products that, you know, um, offer more than the competition. Good little product this, I think, actually. All right, so so what I'm going to do from here is, you know, th this product was a, a quite an interesting product for the, the reasons that I mentioned. I want to go back to this one and I want to kind of look at what else it is, you know, that they sell. So when I said before, um, you know, when I said about you've got to think about the brand and what you might, you know, what the, what the brand vision might be. The brand vision for this is obviously like they've done right. Happy parents, happier children. Um, you might want to flip that around, you know, happy children, happier parents. But they're obviously their their mission is to create the ultimate travel companions to help parents and children enjoy the luxuries of comfortable travel. So you know, you, you could you could look at doing something similar, and you can take a look at all the different products that they have, and then go from there and think about all the problems that parents have. Right, all of the problems that parents have is keeping the kids quiet keeping the kids safe um you know so the kids don't run off if they're going on planes bags that they need to take there's a ton of ideas so this would be an interesting one for me because this i think this is an, an initial product to a brand there, there's ways you can improve upon it but then there's a lot of different things that you could be looking to do um, a lot of different angles with you know with the product direction 
you know, car seat accessories, just go in here and, and have a look at what they're doing. So this is like, obviously, it's some sort of strap for strapping your baby to whatever. But, you know, just go in and find all these different different products that exist in these niches um, and then just see if there's... So th this is kind of like a related product, I guess. This is, this is a cover for a, you know, a, a car sort of... What do you call them? A car seat. It's not doing very well sales-wise. But this will bring you through to stuff like this where, again, kind of all looks the same. Um, it's a little bit sort of same, same. I know I'm clicking on these ads. I probably shouldn't do, but uh, whatever, sue me. Um, it leads you onto products like this. And as I said, I like products like this because they're made from textiles, so they're easy to customize. Um, you know, they're things that, you know, people... You know, people will pay a little bit more if it looks like it's of higher quality. So this one only does 25 a month. But obviously what you need to do is you need to go through and you need to, you know, find all these sort of related products. Um, click into the actual company by clicking on the name. So it looks like they do. I and mean, this just looks like kind of cheap Chinese stuff, doesn't it really? Not not really very branded. But start to, you know, if you're thinking about a niche of, of parents and traveling and helping them out, start to list out all of the products that these parents might be looking at. And then go into Amazon, see if there's a demand. And this is the way that we approach it. We don't just go in looking at for individual products. We go in there to try and find opportunities for, um, for brands where we can help people solve problems. Um, so I, I hope that made sense. I hope that was useful. I know um, some of the stuff that I looked at, I had to edit out, honestly, because uh, a lot of it was a kind of a little bit boring. But um, I hope that made sense is when you're doing your research, you need to be thinking about standing out. You need to be thinking about how you can stand out visually, but also bring more value to the actual customer. And then you've got to be thinking as a brand as a whole, not just an individual product. So start to line up. You know, we know now what our next five products are going to be. Because we've got a clear direction with the brand. We know what our demographic want and what they need, what their problems are. And um, so everything is centered around problems, helping people fix problems and solve problems. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed that one. I will see you in the next video.